verses 7 through 10. Psalms 24, verses 7 through 10. gates and be ye lift up ye everlasting doors and the king of glory shall come in who is this king of glory say that with me church who is this king of glory the Lord strong and mighty the Lord mighty in battle lift up your heads O ye gates even lift them up ye everlasting doors and the king of glory shall come in who is this King of glory, the Lord of hosts, he is the King of glory. You may be seated. In Old Testament times, when King David would go to battle, the priest would carry the Ark of the Covenant before the armies. And when they would come back to Jerusalem, and they would carry the Ark of the Covenant. Somebody would be before the Ark of the Covenant. And they would shout out. Brother, if I can have you put that scripture back up there. Psalms 24, 7 through 10. And they would shout out to the gatekeeper. Lift up your hands, O ye gates. And be ye lift up, ye everlasting doors. And the king of glory shall come in. Now, I want to show you what it was like. Israel, stand over there. So I'm coming in with the ark. Israel's the gatekeeper. Now remember, when they would come home, there would be all kinds of people gathered around. There would be people, people waiting for the victorious return of the arms and the ark of the covenant. And they would say, lift up your hands, all ye gates. Be ye lift up, ye everlasting doors. And the king of glory shall come in. Who is this king of glory? And the scripture, the next one, verse 9. Verse, wait a minute. Okay, I needed you to follow it. <laughs> all right, I'll do it from here. Let's do it one more time. Lift up your heads, all ye gates. Be ye lift up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord, strong and mighty. The Lord, mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O ye gates. Even lift them up, ye everlasting doors. And the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. Who 
is this king of glory? What is your name? And the Lord says, I am the I am. Tell them the I am has sent you. Moses asked the question, who shall I say sent me? And God says, I am. Throughout time, people have tried to figure out who the Lord is, how to call upon the Lord. What is the name of the Lord? We know in the book of Genesis that he's the maker of heaven and earth. We know that he's the spirit that was upon the face of the waters. The king of glory. Who is this king of glory? In the Psalms, church, David tells us that he's the shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Right. Identify the Lord that way. In Isaiah, he says, I am the Lord. That is my name. And my glory I will not give to another, neither my praise to graven images. Jeremiah 16, 21 says this, Before, Behold, therefore behold, I will this once cause them to know. I will cause them to know my hand and my might. And they shall know that my name is the Lord. But church, he wasn't content being that distant God. Being far off. Being known for what he does. Being known by the titles that he had. And still the question remains. Who is this king of glory? You see, the king of glory wanted something more. The king of glory enjoyed the praise. The king of glory blessed the people for what they would do for him. But the king of glory wanted something else. John chapter 8. Then Jesus then said the Jews unto him, Thou art not yet fifty years old, and hast thou seen Abraham? Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, before Abraham was, I am. Wait a minute. Moses? Lord, who shall I say sent? Tell them, I am. I am. And again, in John chapter 18, verses 4 and 6, 4 through 6. Jesus, therefore, knowing all things that should come upon him, went forth and said unto them, Whom seek ye? They answered him, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus said unto them, Church, is that scripture up there? Do you notice the he? Do you notice that it's in the box there? If you have a King James Bible, it's in italics. Do you know what that's saying? You know what it's saying? Wow. It's saying, this he wasn't there. This he doesn't belong. Yeah. This he was added. Right. So Jesus never said, I am he. When they said, we seek Jesus of Nazareth. He said, I am. And Judas also was betrayed and stood with him. Verse 6. As soon then as he had said unto them, I am. Notice the he again. It's in the box. They went back. Jesus says again in the book of John, he said, you call me master and Lord and you do well because I am. He identifies himself the exact same way that God identified himself at the burning bush when Moses said, who shall I say sent me? I am. You shall say sent you. I am. This word I am it means exist emphatically. It means the eternal, I heard it said like this, the eternal self-existent one. He lives forever. Who is this king of glory? Who is he? The Bible says in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. But the book of Colossians says about Jesus, for by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are on earth, visible and invisible, 
whether they be thrones or dominions, principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. Speaking of Jesus, I mentioned earlier that David called the Lord, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. And the good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. Who is this king of glory? Jesus. Again, church, Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6 says, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. The government shall be upon his shoulder, which puts emphasis that he's a king. Awesome. And his name, whose name? The little baby that's born, Jesus. And his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father. The Prince of Peace. Hold on. Wait a minute. The little baby, the little boy is going to be a king? The little boy, his name, what name? Jesus is going to be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father. But at the same time, the Prince of Peace. The book of Revelations, Jesus identifies himself as I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending. He who was and is and is to come, the Almighty. If you go through the book of Isaiah, you'll find angels with six wings, two to cover their face, two to fly with, and two to cover their feet. And they say, holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty who was and is and is to come. something with your own hands. Like a potter makes a pot. Can you imagine? The Lord said, I want to make man. But I'm not just going to speak him into existence. I'm not just going to have somebody else carry it out. But I got to deal with this personally. And he went down and personally he formed Adam. And then personally he breathed into him the breath of life. The second time God took care of something personally. That it wasn't good enough to send an angel. It wasn't good enough to speak it. It wasn't good enough to just have nature do it. But he took care of it personally. So when it came to your salvation and mine, who is this king of glory? The Bible says that this shall be a sign to you that a virgin should give birth and that his name shall be called Emmanuel, God with us. Church, there's a mystery. The mystery is, is that we don't understand how it works. The Bible says without controversy, no argument, brother. I don't want to argue the point. Great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh. God. The Bible says God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself. Unto himself. Who is this king of glory? He took care of your and my salvation personally. It wasn't enough to have somebody else do it. It wasn't enough to command. It wasn't enough to manipulate circumstances and situations. He did it himself. He said over and over again in the scriptures, church, the Lord is my name. For time's sake, I've only listed two. In the study that I do, I've got about eight of them. And that's keeping them short. When he says, the Lord is my name. But wait a minute, we sang the song over there earlier, Sister Wayne. 
Every knee shall bow. Every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord forever. Right? Right? And the Bible says that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Brother Skip, so far it sounds like you're trying to tell me that Jesus is God the Father. But why would that scripture say that every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that he is Lord to the glory of God the Father? Hold on, I'll show you why. Isaiah 45, 21 through 23. Declare ye and bring it forth. Yea, let them take counsel together. Who hath showed this from ancient time? Who hath declared it of old? Have not I, Jehovah? Who's speaking here, church? Jehovah God? Have not I, Jehovah? Right. And there is no God else besides me. A just God and a Savior. Savior. There is none besides me. Now, I don't care personally how you use the word besides because it works either way. Whether you use it as other than or whether you use it as next to. It works either way. He said, there is none besides me. There's no one equal to me. There's no one other than me. And he just called himself the Savior. <coughs> For I am God. Look unto me and be ye saved all the ends of the earth. For I am God and there is none else. By myself I have sworn. Do you know why he swore by himself, church? There's nothing greater. He can't swear by heaven. It's not as great as him. He can't swear by anything on earth. He created it. It's not as great as him. So he swears by himself. I have sworn by myself, have I sworn. The word has gone forth from my mouth in righteousness and shall not return. His word will not return. When he says something, it's done. That's right. <laughs> it's a, you ever see that bumper sticker? The Lord said it. I believe it. That settles it. I don't care if you believe it. The Lord settles it. Said it. That settles it. It has nothing to do with whether you believe it or not. Okay. The word is gone forth from my mouth in righteousness and shall not return. Then unto me, who? Jehovah. Unto me, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall swear. Unto me. Jesus is that King of Glory. Right. Jesus is the Lion, speaking of his divinity, and the Lamb, speaking of his humanity. Jesus is the Lily of the Valley, the Rose of Sharon, the Bright Morning Star. He is the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. Jesus is the Alpha, the Omega, the Beginning and the End. He was.
Uh, wait a minute, what did Jesus offer to live in the world? Living one? Now we sit on the throne in heaven, offering the same thing. Jesus. But wait a minute. Now I want to take you back again. Lift up your hands. Be lifted up, the everlasting gates. For the King of glory shall come in. The King of glory shall come in. We've established who the King of glory is. We've established that is a victorious return. And now the King of glory is shouting out. Lift up your hands. Be ye lifted up, ye everlasting gates, on a glorious, triumphant return from the cross. Hallelujah. When he defeated death, hell, and the grave. When he was able to take the sting of death and the victory of the grave. Church, the Lord is still in the battle. Remember what it said? The Lord, strong and mighty in battle. He's in the battle with the world and with evil. He's already got the victory, but the bad battle rages. Pastor Anthony said it earlier. He fixed it. The fix is in. It's rigged. That's, that's where the boxing commission got it from. God. <laughs> it's fixed. But the battle rages. Do you not know, church, as much as he loves you, as much as he shed his blood for you, that the Bible says that friendship with the world is an enmity with God. That means you make yourself an enemy to God. Right. If you are a friend of the world, if you enjoy sin, come on, brother, that you have made yourself an enemy of God. Hold on, wait a minute. The God that spoke the universe into existence, the God that split the Red Sea, the God that drowned Pharaoh's army, the God that calls fire down from heaven at will. The God that destroyed multitudes of armies. That God? Hold on! The God that can speak and calm a storm with his voice? That God? The God that can raise the dead? Or the same God that can speak death? Just speak it. Uh, you know, church, I'm sorry, but I'm a little intimidated. <laughs> Let me rephrase that. I'm a lot intimidated. I don't want to be on this guy's bad side. Yeah. You know, there's this thing about, if I can explain this to you briefly, I mentioned boxing just now. There's an Italian that I'm going to mention. Boom, boom, Mancini. His name is Rocky Marciano. Okay. The only heavyweight fighter to ever exist undefeated. Undefeated. Yep. Fought more often than any boxer today. Fought more fights than any boxer today. Undefeated. You want to know what the trick of his being undefeated was? My father taught me this when I was little. He's a big boxing fan. He picked his fights. Anybody who could honestly knock him out, he didn't fight. Well, you know what? I'd like to pick my fights. And God is not one that I want to pick. God is not one that I want to get in the ring with him. I do not want to be the enemy of the creator of the universe. I do not want to be the enemy of the one who made the universe stand still so Joshua could have that victory. 
I do not want to be the one who guided a stone from a slingshot into the forehead of a giant to kill him. I do not want to fight that one. I'd rather be on his side. I'd rather stand behind him and say, go get him, Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> I'm back here. So what do you do when you're faced with an almighty king of glory? What do you do when the king of glory comes and lays siege to your city? Better known as your heart. What do you do? I'll tell you what you do. Amen. Seen those old westerns? <laughs> That's it. Lone Ranger, we're done. Sheriff Herb, we're done. You surrender. That's right. You surrender. I hear it. Surrender. But church, hold on. Let me tell you how we think of surrender. Let me take you back a little bit. Let me give you an earthly situation. World War II. We're in war with Japan. Germany's already done. Italy already switched sides. But Japan is holding on. They think they can take us. So we make a couple of bombs. Go over there. We let them know what for. They see the devastation. They see that we have the ability to wipe them completely off the map and off the rest of history. And at this point, they said, we need to surrender. I dare you to find a situation in history where the surrendering party, the surrendering party, dictated the terms of their surrender. That's right. That's good. I dare you to find any country, any city, any army that said we'll surrender, but that said we'll surrender if that said we'll surrender as long as or we'll surrender until. You will not find it. So why do we go to God? Right. The God that judged Sodom and Gomorrah. Right. The God that judged peoples for their idolatry. Why do we go to the God that rains down fire and brimstone? Yeah. The God that flood the earth. Yeah. Why do we go to him and say, God, I'll surrender as long as I can hold on to my marijuana. God, I'll surrender, but I'm not giving up my mistress. Or God, I'm not giving up my boyfriend. God, I'll surrender as long as I can have alcohol whenever I want. God, I'll surrender up to this point. Right. I'm not going to tithe, God. I'm sorry, I just don't believe that I should give my money to the church. I'll surrender up until it comes up to my money. You find a situation in the Bible like that? You find a situation in history like that? Where somebody surrendered, but they dictated the terms of the surrender? No. I don't see it. But this is why they surrender. If we don't surrender, they're going to completely wipe us out. Right. So we're going to surrender hoping that they'll have mercy on us. Hoping. Wow. But now remember, the king of glory doesn't take pleasure in the death of the wicked. The king of glory doesn't want to destroy you. But now understand this. This is how you surrender. Matthew 21, 44 says, Whosoever shall fall on this stone shall be broken. So when you fall on the stone, the cornerstone, which is Jesus Christ, you have to be broken. You have to say, no more can I do it on my own. No more can I be my own God. No more can I be my own Lord and my own boss. No more can I do things my way. But now I'm humble and I'm broken because I'm broken in a contrite heart. He will not despise. Oh. But the one whom that rock falls upon shall be turned into power. 
Don't, church, allow him. Don't, let me rephrase that. Don't push yourself to the point that you have him fall on you. You see, now he doesn't live in buildings anymore. He doesn't live in a building anymore. He doesn't live in a little box with two angels on top of it anymore. But now he wants to live in your heart. John chapter 14, verses 15 through 18 says this. If you love me, keep my commandments. If you love me, keep my commandments. Now watch this. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Hold on, it sounds like three people, right? I will pray to the Father, and he'll give you another comforter. What it sounds like, right? It sounds like three people, right? If I said, I'm going to pray to Millie that maybe she'll send Israel over. Okay? That's what it sounds like. Okay? But let's keep going. I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him. So the world don't know the spirit of truth, the world don't see him, the world don't know him, but you know him, speaking to the apostles. Right. Who did they know? Jesus. They knew Jesus. For he dwelleth with you. Who lived with them? Jesus. And shall be in you. Catch this. Remember he said, I will not leave you comfortless. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. I. Be lifted up. Ye everlasting gates. And the King of glory shall come in. Church, the King of glory is calling out to you. The King of glory wants you to surrender. The King of glory wants you to open up the gates to your city, to your mind, to your heart, so that he can come in. He requires total surrender. He requires total commitment. You can't come to him and do it your way. You can't come to him and dictate it the way you want it. If he is truly Lord, which means master, then you'll surrender. Church, I'm going to make this call two ways. There's people in the sound of my voice that you believe that you've surrendered. But right now, if you really give thought to it, there's things in your life that you know are not pleasing to the Lord. There's people in the sound of my voice that have been baptized in Jesus' name, have even received the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. And you still are Lord of your own life. You still decide where that line is drawn that you won't cross for Jesus. Jesus is calling out to you today to surrender, to give it all. And I'm asking you to come to this one. And now I'm going to talk to you that you come to church, you like what you feel, you come to church. And you know it's the right thing to do. You come to church and you enjoy the word of God. And God has laid siege to your city. He's surrounding you. You feel his presence. You feel his love. You know the awesomeness of his might. But you get to surrender. Church, he's the only conquering king who comes in to bless, who comes in to prosper, who comes in to give you a better end. And I'm pleading with you today. Come to this altar and surrender. Come to this altar and receive a better end. Come to this altar and drink of the waters of the fountain of life freely. Come, church. Come visitors, come on. Come to the altar. Surrender it all. And if you want the Holy Ghost.
Ghost. He's here today to come in the King of Glory and give you the Holy Ghost. He's here today that you can receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. Because that's how you and everyone knows.